Hello everyone, welcome to IntelliPath. In today's video, we will be learning about some common SQL Server connection errors. But before we begin the session, make sure to subscribe to our channel and also hit on the bell icon so that you will never miss an update from us. So let's start with the agenda. We will start with the introduction to SQL Server and then we will be discussing about different types of errors like unable to log into the server, login fail for the user error and network and instance related errors. Let's start with the introduction to SQL Server. Data is a collection of facts and figures. And in today's world, we have a humongous amount of data that is being generated by various internet resources. To handle and manipulate such amount of data, we have a language called as Structured Query Language, which is nothing but SQL that has been introduced years ago. There are different versions of SQL available in the market provided by different organizations. SQL Server is the version of SQL that is developed by Microsoft. In the SQL Server installation, we have two major steps. One is to install SQL Server and the other one is to install SQL Server Management Studio. The different types of errors that we are going to discuss today are those which you're going to face when you're going to connect to SQL Server Management Studio. So the first type of error that we are going to discuss is unable to log into the server error. The reason for this error is that you could have given a wrong server name. And how do we resolve it? Though most of the times the server name would be automatically retrieved, there are very few scenarios that may not happen. So in that case, we need to keep a check on server name and select it manually. So in order to resolve unable to log into the server error, we need to make sure the server name is right. So for that, if your server name is not retrieved automatically, we need to click on this drop down box available under the server name field. And after clicking on that, you'll be able to see different instances available for you. But if you're still not able to see it here, you just need to click on browse for more and click on this database engine and you can see whatever instance you want to connect to. Just click on that one of the instance and click on OK. So now you'll be good to go ahead with and connect to the server. The second type of error is login fail for the user error. This error may occur in one of the following scenarios. One, if you have given a wrong username. Two, if you have given a wrong password. When we are installing SQL Server, by default, the username should be SA, which means system administrator. So other than that, if you give any other username, it would throw you an error saying that login fail for user SA. So to resolve login fail for user SA error, make sure you give the right password and username. See, right? Now you can connect to your SQL Server successfully using a right username and password without facing the error of login fail for the user SA. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPad provides Microsoft SQL certification training in partnership with Microsoft. The course link of which is given in the description below. The third and the last error that you may face frequently is network and instant related errors. The reason for these errors can be one of the following. A. Your TCP IP port of your server instance is disabled. B. Your SQL Server browser is disabled. And C. Your SQL Server instance itself is not running. So, to resolve a network related or instance specific error, we need to firstly check whether TCP IP port of the related instance is enabled or not. To check that, firstly, we need to go into the SQL Server Configuration Manager. So, to enable the TCP IP port of your server instance, firstly, we need to go into SQL Server Configuration Manager. Here, the first thing we need to check is whether all the SQL Server services that are related to your server instance are running or not. Once confirming that they are running properly, we need to further go to the SQL Server Network Configuration that is SQL native client configuration and under which you'll have this client protocols. Just click on that and here you will see whether the TCP IP port is enabled or disabled. If it is disabled, right click over it and click on enable and it should enable the TCP IP port. So just to cross verify whether the server instance you're trying to connect the TCP IP port is enabled or not, you need to just to click on this and go for protocols for whatever server instance you're looking for and check whether TCP IP is enabled or not. If it is disabled, 
just enable it. So now, once after enabling this TCP IP port, you should be fine with logging into your SQL Server instance. Other than TCP IP port connection, if your SQL Server browser or your SQL Server instance which you're trying to connect are not running, you may face the network or instance related error. So to resolve that, you need to go into the services firstly, then browse to the services which start with the letter S. There, you need to go and check for firstly the SQL Server browser. If it is disabled, you need to right click on it, go to properties and at the startup type, you need to change it into automatic. Click on apply, then start it. Once it is started, just click on OK. And second thing you need to confirm is whether your SQL Server instance which you are trying to connect is running or not. Here, the instance which I am trying to connect is not running. So, right click on it, click on properties and click on start. And click on OK. So now, you are good to go with connection of the SQL Server instance without any error. Just a quick info guys. Intellipad provides Microsoft SQL certification training in partnership with Microsoft. The course link of which is given in the description below.